I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. Who's gonna tell you when it's too late? Who's gonna tell you things aren't so great? You know you can't go on thinking nothing wrong Who's gonna drive you home tonight Who's gonna pick you up when you fall Who's gonna hang it up when you call? Who's gonna pay attention to your dreams? And who's gonna plug the ears when you scream? You know you can't go on thinking there's nothing wrong. Who's gonna drive you home tonight? How's everybody doing today? So here I am in Millbrook, New York, upstate New York. Um, kind of near Poughkeepsie and kind of near Lithgow and I'm pretty sure it's Millbrook. Small cemeteries. Sometimes they're easy to find a grave, sometimes uh, that I'm looking for, sometimes not. Uh, all depends. Uh, this is the grave of Rick Ocasek from The Cars. A musical genius. I think that's easy to, I mean, seven solo albums, seven albums with the Cars. He produced so many bands. He produced Weezer. He produced the Blue Album by Weezer. Uh, now to Surf. And then you think of his, the hits of the Cars, Drive, Just What I Needed, Shake It Up, My Best Friend's Girl, You Might Think, and my personal favorite, Magic. I love the song Magic by the Cars. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. I never get tired of it. Uh, of course, married to, to Paulina Poroskova. Uh, they just separated back in uh, 2019, earlier that year, I believe, and they're still sharing the same townhouse since she found him there. Deceased, unfortunately. It was the natural causes. He suffered from arter, uh, artery disease and heart disease. And um, yeah, that's very sad. He was not too old at all, and we're, I think, I think that's his grave right there. I'm looking around at these graves. Some are new granite and some the marble. Some are very old, but there's one that seems to have some sort of musical instrument on it. I mean, I look, I don't, I, I, I like to be surprised when I come to a grave. That sounds weird, I know. But I mean, I like to, I want to know what it looks like. I want to find it myself. So I don't really look at pictures online. And uh, it's to share my reaction with you and your, you getting to see it for the first time that I do. So let's go take a look and see if this is Rick O'Case's grave. We'll talk a little bit about him, uh, tell you a bit more. And um, I mean, just a, a rock god, a rock god. Remember the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the cars. Let's go right over here. So yes, it's, I was showing you around the cemetery like I like to do at the beginning of the video. And the sun's coming down now. And that's west, obviously. And it's just gorgeous up here. It's a, it was a hot day now. It's still hot, but it's it's a little bit of a tiny breeze, but it's just beautiful. But I'm pretty sure right here on this hill, 
This would be Rick Ocasek's grave. I think. We're going to take a look now together. Rick Ocasek. 1944 to 2019. Keep on laughing. And as you can see, somebody left a little car there. That's great. Rick Ocasek, 1944 to 2019. Keep on laughing. People have left rocks everywhere. I'm going to put one right there. A shiny one. Okay, just a brief biography on Richard Ocasek. Spell with a T after the O. He dropped the T later on to become just Ocasek. He was born in Baltimore, Maryland on March 23, 1944. When he was 16, he became interested in music via such early rockers as Buddy Holly and the Crickets. In the early 70s, he moved from Cleveland to Boston and began playing in a folk band called Milkwood with friend Ben Orzachowski. They released a lone forgotten album in 1973 called How's the Weather. When the record failed to chart, the group split up. But Rick and Ben stuck together, and inspired by proto-punk outfits, the Modern Lovers, Velvet Underground, Roxy Music, they formed Rick and the Rabbits. And both of them changed their last names. Rosachowski went to Orr, and Otkesik to Okasik. In the mid-70s, they formed a new band, and they added three additional members. And shortly thereafter, they changed their name to The Cars, with Rick becoming the undisputed leader, penning all of their tunes. Signed to Elektra, the band rocketed to stardom on the strength of their classic mega-selling self-titled debut in 1978. Then 1979's Candio, 1980's Panorama, 1981's Shake It Up, the group became one of the top rock bands in the U.S. But with the advent of MTV, the way a band looked proved almost just as important in the music, and the cars seemed custom-made for this. Heartbeat City became one of the year's biggest rock records, spawned several top 10 singles, and heavily rotated in stylish videos. Rick actually found himself in the tabloids around this time when he began dating and eventually marrying fashion model Paulina Porskova. She's did the woman in the cars uh, video for Drive. Then he released a solo album, then he returned to the cars, but their album 1987 Door to Door didn't do too well, then they split up about a year later. Now, in the 90s, he released a bunch of solo albums, a few of them, and one of them was produced by Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, Troubleizing, and that's a really good album. And he began producing again for such acts as Bad Religion, uh, Guided by Voices, Hole, and Weezer. I believe he did the Green Album and the Blue Album, 1994-2001, and also, I believe he did the uh, 2014 Weezer album, Everything Will Be Alright in the End. I'm a big Weezer fan. That's a great album, too. And as I said, he died of natural causes at the age of 75 on September 15th, 2019. And that's my visit to the grave of Rick Ocasek. Uh, if you're a Cars fan, Weezer fan, if you're a music fan, that's, that's Rick Ocasek right there, the final resting place. Incredible. Uh, I forgot to mention the name of the cemetery. It's called Nine Partners Cemetery here in Millbrook, Dutchess County, upstate New York. Beautiful place. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Rick. Okay, to all of you, love you. Peace out.